Hey Rocketeers, in this video we're gonna be working on floating. We're gonna learn how to float on our back and on our stomach. Most of the times beginners have a hard time floating because they, they think their legs are sinking and that's not floating. Well, it's okay if your legs sink a little bit. Your legs are heavier muscles, they're going to sink naturally in the water. I'll teach you how to keep them up in this video. The first thing you do when you're floating on your back is make sure you have lungs full of air. Without your lungs full of air, it's gonna be harder for you to stay up. Your lungs inside your chest act like air balloons, keeping you up at the surface of the water. So take a super deep breath, max your lungs out with air, and then release. When you're on your back, you're not gonna to wanna to release all the way out. You're only gonna to wanna to release about halfway out and then refill the tank. Let it out about halfway, refill the tank. Watch me. I'm on my back. I'm gonna take a deep breath in, watch my body rise. Now I'm gonna blow it all out and you're gonna watch me sink. I need to keep air in my lungs for me to stay up. So this time I'll only blow out about halfway, watch. Take a deep breath in, body rises. I'm gonna let it out about halfway. Now I'll hold it here, you'll notice I don't go underwater, but you're not gonna wanna hold it halfway out. You're gonna wanna breathe it back in. Body comes back up, let it out about halfway. Breathe it back in. Now you don't have to be as aggressive with your breaths as I'm being for dra dramatization so you can hear it and see it. But when I'm on my back, I wanna be relaxed, okay? So it'll look a lot like this once you've mastered. As you can see, my face stays dry, my nose, my mouth stays dry. Maybe the water is above my ears, but that's okay. If you get a little tickle in your, in your ears and that's uncomfortable for you, you might try putting your face straight down in the water first, because when you come up with your face down, the water usually spills out of your ears and doesn't feel so comfortable. Once you're more used to that feeling, then resume your practice and your training for the back flow. All right, now at this point, you may have been seeing my hands and my feet moving underwater a little bit, maybe fluttering. That's because now we're gonna learn how to keep your legs up. When I said earlier that it's very difficult to keep your legs up without moving in the water, that's because objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So if you're moving in the water, that momentum will rise you to the surface of the water and keep you there if you keep moving. Once you stop moving, your body's going to sink down below the surface again. So keep your momentum going. Watch me. When I'm on my back, if I don't kick at all, my legs will sink. But if I kick my feet just so lightly that they stay up, I'm not exerting much effort, and I could do this for as long as it takes. All you're doing is fluttering your feet very lightly to redirect water downwards, keeping your feet and your hips upwards, okay? So, watch again. This time, I'm gonna move it a little bit faster. I'm gonna move a little bit quicker pace because that's gonna keep my feet and my legs up even higher. Now, once you're good at that, you can really get your feet moving and you'll make a lot of progress. And that's a great place to start training. If you want to do laps in the water someday, that's a great place to start, is kicking on your back where you can breathe and you're comfortable in the water and nothing feels uh, overwhelming for you, okay? Now, my hands are doing something similar. My hands are also kind of fluttering in the water. I'm waving goodbye to my feet just to redirect water downwards and backwards, keeping my body up because all the people out there on my channel that comment saying, oh, I'm too muscular, or my friend's too muscular, my, my husband's too muscular, it's okay. You can be a muscular person and float. You're just need, gonna need to keep moving more. You're gonna need more momentum than anybody else. But it's possible. So my hands are going to be redirecting water back down to my feet. You don't need to splash. In fact, the higher your hands are in the water, the more you'll sink, okay? You don't want your hands high in the water. You want them barely underneath the surface. If they splash a little bit, that's okay. 
but you're waving goodbye to your feet, redirecting water backwards and downwards to help keep you up. A lot of people will float with their arms out to the side like this. While that does work, especially if you spread your legs apart too because of the surface area, you're still gonna find yourself sinking after a while. So I don't mind, I actually prefer to keep your arms closer to your body where they can be more effective as you paddle with your hands, okay? So the hands and the feet very lightly are redirecting water backwards and downwards, keeping your body up at the surface. The momentum that you're using by paddling and kicking is also keeping you up at the surface. So if you've ever struggled with sinking legs or just feeling like you just couldn't float at all in general and nothing ever worked for you, remember to keep your lungs full of air, remember to paddle lightly with your hands and kick lightly with your feet. Alrighty, the last part of floating on your back and helping you stay up is the head position. Your head is key when you're in the water. It's kind of like the steering wheel of a car. Wherever your head turns, your body follows. If you turn it to the left, you'll go to the left. If you turn it to the right, you'll go to the right. If you push it down, you'll go down. If you pick it up, your body will try to go up until gravity sucks you back under the water. So, when you're on your back, you want your chin elevated a little bit. Tip your forehead back towards the water, and if a little bit of water trickles over your forehead, that's okay, that's a good thing. Watch very closely. I'm gonna put my chin down, and you'll watch my body sink. Okay? I'm gonna keep my chin up this time, and you'll watch my body float. Okay, your head being up like this is more like a front quadrant body position in the water, meaning we're balancing our body backwards a little bit. Because our legs are so heavy, we need our head to counterbalance the weight of our legs. So I'm tipping my head backwards, and like I said, if a little bit of water trickles over your forehead, that's okay. And once you get good at this, you might move into the streamline kicking, which is difficult because you might feel a little bit less balanced in the water, but theoretically, with your arms behind you, you're more balanced in the water. When your chin is up that high, you might feel upside down in the water. And that's okay, that's actually the feeling you're searching for. Because when you're on your back, it's the opposite of when you're on your belly. When you're on your belly, you wanna feel like you're swimming downhill. When you're on your back, you wanna feel like you're swimming downhill, but upside down, okay? So you might feel a little bit disoriented and it might take time getting used to, that's okay. Just keep pressing that chin up, keep the air in your lungs. Don't lift your head out of the water. As soon as you lift your head out of the water, because your head is the weight of a bowling ball, you will sink through the rest of your body. Watch me. It's not easy. I almost could keep it up, but it's definitely not easy. And unless you're a swimmer who's, who, who swam for 17 years competitively, that will not be easy for you either. So, if you need to float in the water, remember the four steps. Keep air in your lungs. Keep your feet kicking lightly. They don't need to be aggressive. You don't need to bend your knees. You don't need to bring your legs out of the water. Just light kicks. Light paddling with your hands. And last but not least, keep that chin back to balance your body in the water. Thanks for watching this video. If you appreciate it, splash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and follow us over on our other social media channels for more content throughout the week.